Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope you guys had a great day today. Today is Tuesday. Bitcoin was up just a little bit today, but at least it finished up the day green. The miners for the most part were green also, which was great to see. We'll take a look at a story on Bitcoin that is kind of close to its uh, realized price point. So, but there are some concerns that we may go down a little bit before everything is all good in the world, I guess. We also have Argo providing their quarterly results along with Digihost. So we'll take a look at those numbers that uh, they reported and what I have for them in the spreadsheets. I was pretty doggone close with Argo. Digihost, I was quite a bit off. I'm trying to figure out why. But we'll get into the numbers here as well. But as always, not financial advice. You guys know the drill here. I'm invested in the following coins and companies. And let's get into the miners here first. And then we'll get into Bitcoin and the rest of the stories. So Annie today was up five percent to a dollar five it's up another one, almost one percent in the after hours to a dollar six argo obviously we reported today they were up 7.97 on the day percentage wise to 63 cents bit digital was up nicely today 11.18 percent to a dollar 79 it's up a little bit more in the after hours to a dollar 81 bit farms was up 7.49 percent to two dollars and one cents up another almost two percent in the after hours to two dollars and five cents CleanSpark was up 5.93% to $6.25, another 2.4% up in the after hours to $6.40. Core Scientific was up 3.12% to $3.97, up a little bit in the after hours to $3.99. Digihost was up 9.63% to $1.48. DMG was up 0.61% to $2, not $2.00, cents, almost $0.30 cents there. Hive was up 8.77% to $0.93. Cents. Hut 8 was up 6.43% to $2.65, up another 7.17% in the after hours to $2.84. Iris Energy was up way today, it was up 20.82%, obviously it was way down yesterday, it was like down 30 some percent yesterday, so it's obviously a little bounce there. And it did reach a 52 week low yesterday of $4.56. It's down a little bit in the after hours to $5.71. Luxfolio was up 2.94% to $0.14. Cents. Marathon was up 7.46% to $11.09. It's up a little bit more in the after hours to $11.35. Mawson was actually down today a little bit, 4.81%. It was up quite nicely yesterday, uh, but it's also down a little bit in the after hours to $2.74. Riot Blockchain was up 5.9%. 5.98% to $7.62, up another 3% in the after hours to $7.85. And Stronghold was up really nice today, up 18.01% to $2.49, up another 3.61% in the after hours to $2.58. All right, so all the miners did pretty good today. Obviously, Bitcoin was up in the green today. That obviously corresponded with the miners going up. But looking at Bitcoin right now, we are kind of trading sideways here in the last couple of hours. No real movement as far as, or direction as far as which way we want to go in the price. It's at 30282 right now, and we've been swinging in this range here for quite a while. Let me get rid of the lines here, make it a little bit more obvious here. Uh, obviously, it looks a little bit more dramatic now with this, but obviously we've been at this range here between 3600 and approximately 20, uh, 29826 So we've been kind of range-bound a little bit here in the last 24 hours or so. We'll see if that continues. Looking at the RSI, the RSI is at 51 right now. Last time we were at this range, we were back here, which was right around here. And obviously the price of Bitcoin was lower at that point. We were at 29,951. We are now at 30,271. So obviously a little bit of a price increase while the RSI is at the same level, which is usually a good sign, but we'll see how this plays out going forward. On the daily chart, we can see that obviously we had a green day yesterday, which was just a couple hours ago that ended. We are now starting the new day. We are in a little bit in the red, but we did have three days of green, one red, and then one green. Hopefully this continues to be another green day today, but we'll see how that plays out as well. And we'll see if we can tackle this support or resistance line of 32,800, the white line right here. So that's it for Bitcoin, Ethereum. Ethereum is doing pretty much the same thing as Bitcoin right now is. We've had three green days, one red day, one green. We're in the red right now. So we'll see where that one goes along with Bitcoin going forward. All right, let's take a look at the first story we have here, which is Bitcoin is discounted near its realized price 
but analysts say there's room for deep downside. How deep of a downside? Well, we're looking at possibly going down, you know, eight to ten thousand dollars, possibly more like six, I think. Six to eight thousand would be, I think, where we should probably maybe bounce to or drop to. So here we go. There are early signs of the dust settling in the crypto market now with now that investors believe that the worst of the Terra Luna uh, collapse looks to be over, which is true. Well, it seems like that has kind of fizzled out already. Um, it didn't bring down Bitcoin as much as some had thought. The chart indicates fallout was widespread, devastating for altcoins, uh, but however, BTC held up fairly well, which is true. Uh, even with the May 12 drop to 26,697, marketing the lowest price level since 2020, multiple metrics suggest that current levels could represent a good entry uh, to, you know, to BTC to buy. Uh, we can see the chart here on it, and there's a chart, I believe this is the 200-day moving average chart down here, but this is the regular chart here where we bottomed out last time we were around this uh, back in 2021, it looks like, or no, 2000, at the end of December or so of 2020. And the pullback to this level is notable in that it was a retest of Bitcoin's 200-week exponential moving average at 26,990. According to cryptocurrency research from Delphi Digital, this metric has historically served as a key area for prior price bottoms. So this is obviously possibly good news. So Bitcoin price approaches long-term support. We're looking at the 200-day moving average, EMA. And we can see it touching the red line and bouncing. We have gone below it a couple of times here in 2020, it looks like, and we bounced off of it. We were below it for a while here between 2018 and 2019, which can happen. And then obviously we were below it here in 2015. But it does look like each time we go down, we seem to be uh, below it for a lower time span, it looks like. Continuing on here... Uh, they're talking about stablecoin pressures. Bitcoin approaches its realized price. So as a result of the market pullback, the price of Bitcoin is now trading the closest it has been to its realized price since 2020. Realized price is 24000 We obviously came down to 26000 and change. So we're only 9.5% off hitting the realized price. So here's a price low of 26513 9.5% from that. We're a little bit higher now with 30000 and change on Bitcoin. So we could go down... Uh, another 6,000 or so. But to that, we may fall below it. Uh, I don't know how much we might fall below it, or we may bounce off it, or we may not even test that part. So we'll see how that plays out, obviously. Previous bear markets saw the price of BTC trade below its realized price for extended periods of time, but at the amount of time has actually decreased every cycle, with Bitcoin only spending seven days below its realized price during the bear, bear market of 2019 and 2020. So here we got the bear markets 2011, Bear market duration was 205 days. Uh, days below realized price was 114. 2014, 2015, bear market lasted 682 days. Days below realized price were at 299. And bear market of 2018, 2019, we were in a bear market for 470 days. And days below realized price, we were 133 days. And then 2019, 2020, we had 267 days of bear market and we stayed below that price, realized price for seven days. So will we stay below it for longer than that? The only time will tell, obviously, on that one. Also, Wrecked Capital tweeted here, if history is any indication, most BTC bear market bottoms form quickly in a volatile manner, but the accumulation ranges that form afterwards take time. Chances are there will be sufficient time to accumulate it at deeply discounted prices. That's what we've been saying, dollar cost average, if you can, obviously and buy the dips when you can. Uh, Delphi Digital said, in the event this happens, look for the following levels. One, weekly structure and volume structure support at 22 to 24,000. And number two, 2017 all-time high retest of 19,000 to uh, 20,000, which may happen. We'll have to obviously see. So if that happens, we're still looking to going down basically, what, 33% from 30,000 down to 20,000. It's a 33% drop, basically, if that happens. And that would represent, let's see if we can figure that out. On Bitcoin, that would represent from the all-time high, if we went down, let me zoom this out, so that way so we can see it. So all-time high was reached here, back here, so right around the 69,000 mark. And if we go down to the 20,000, 
or so mark, that would be 70% drop from the all time high. We are currently, we dropped to the 25,000 mark. We were down 63%, which is quite a substantial drop anyways on it. All right, so we'll have to see obviously what happens with Bitcoin going forward. Right now we're kind of in a slump a little bit, real no direction as far as which way to go. We'll have to see what news comes out tomorrow and if anything is gonna be able to move it up or down. All right, let's take a look at Argo Blockchain and their results. So Argo Blockchain PLC announced its first quarter results of 2022. Revenue of 19.5 million um, in US dollars, 14.9 in British pounds. That's a 9% year over year increase, which isn't that much, um, but it is an increase nonetheless. Produced net income of 2.1 million or 1.6 million in pounds and 19.1 million of adjusted EBITDA or 14.5 million British pounds of adjusted EBITDA. 24% increase year over year, which is good. Mine 470 Bitcoin and Bitcoin equivalents in Q1 of 2022, which is a 21% increase. Obviously, the price of Bitcoin has come down, resulting in lower revenue or lower increase in revenue. They do huddle of 2,700 Bitcoins and Bitcoin equivalents as of 31st March of 2022. And well, let's see what else do we have here that was interesting. The company's mining margin for the first quarter was 76% with an average direct cost per BTC mined of 9,779. I believe Bitfarms was at $8,700 per Bitcoin mined. So that was a little bit better. So they're kind of towards the higher end on it. I'm not sure why that is the case, whether it's hosting. I don't know. I can't remember if they do hosting or not. So don't quote me on that one. Uh, maybe it's just the electricity that they have or the miners. We'll take a look at the numbers that I have here and maybe we can figure that out. Figure that out. Uh, the company still expects to increase its hash rate to 5.5 exahash by the end of 22, subject to machine deliveries. And let me see if there was anything else here that I wanted to cover. I think that was possibly it. Oh, total assets. 415 million total assets. Uh, total current assets is 228 million. Total non-current assets of 187 million. So let's get into the numbers here. And this is why I wanted to point this out to you guys. The market share currently on them is pretty, pretty low. Argo, there we go. Uh, Argo has a 298 million market cap right now. So looking at this, total assets of 415, they are way undervalued. I do have them at also 2,682 Bitcoins. I think they reported that they sold some back in April. And so that's the most recent numbers that we have for them, but that still represents basically 27% of their market cap is their HODL position right now. Uh, this just leads me to believe that they are even further undervalued based on what their current assets are, as opposed to what they actually have in market cap. Uh, feature hash rate, I have them currently at 3.6, almost 3.7, based on the reported miners that they are going to be getting in. If they're getting to, planning on being at 5.5, I believe they reported here my memory serves me correct, which my memory sometimes can fail me. 5.5, yep. By the end of 2022, that would represent an increase of basically another 2 exahash or so, 1.8 exahash, that they would have to buy in addition to what they already have. Um, unless I missed something, if I did miss something, pr please correct me in the comments down below, and I'll take a look to see where I missed something. But I, I've been checking on these guys every day pretty much to see if they're reporting any news, and I haven't seen anything on them. Uh, same with all the other miners, so I'm keeping an eye on everybody here. All right, as far as the numbers are concerned, they reported 19.5 million. I had them at 19.465, really close, really, really close. I was happy with this one. I was only negative point, like a quarter of a percent uh, from where they actually came in, which is really good. I'm happy with that for the first three months of this year. Obviously, we'll have to see what happens in this current quarter, which is April, May, and June. The only thing that's kind of concerning is their hash rate has not grown at all. I know that they reported they're obviously going to be firing up a um, data center here, I think, this month in May, they said. So hopefully we'll get some increase in hash rate from that. Otherwise, April, March, February, and January have been pretty, pretty flat for the most part. And they were able to, even though they were flat, they were able to squeeze out a little bit more Bitcoins mined in March against February and in April as well. 
So they've been obviously looking like they've been operating for longer periods of time than they were in prior months, which is good as well. Other than that, I do have them at currently, if we're using the 10 price range multiple, and I mean, right now they're at, what, is, what are they at? 62 cents. I mean, they are under the five price to more. Yeah, they're like four price range multiple. And I do believe they should be closer to probably 10 to 12 or something like that. So I'm thinking this should be $1.77 based on the fact that they haven't grown much recently in the last couple of months. But if they do start growing their hash rate, I wouldn't just have a problem getting up to maybe 15 even. And if they report that they're getting more miners installed. So that's it. Obviously, not a tremendous quarter by them. They did beat last year's quarter by just 9%. So that was obviously unfortunate, but they are building out and they are hopefully going to be able to transition that build out into actual hash rate increases going forward from that. Uh, but we'll see. Time will tell. All right, so let me know what you guys thought of this one down in the comments below, and let's get into DigiHost. DigiHost is here. Let's go stroll up. So DigiHost announced its first quarter results with a 77% increase in coins mined during Q1 2022 compared to Q1 of 2021. And here's the interesting part of it. So the company's previous investments in infrastructure along with securing access to clean and renewable energy sources led to... Revenue generation from mining of 7.3 million, an increase of 53% from the preceding year, which is good. Nice growth there. Despite challenging market conditions, DigiHost is committed to its goal of being a leading blockchain technology company with approximately 31 million of cash and cash equivalents currently on hand, valued at today's BTC price in a mining operation with break-even costs of approximately 12,000. So that's even higher than Argo, but about 2.3 thousand more um, than definitely more than bit farms and some of the other guys so that is obviously something that they need to work on is getting that to come down underneath 10 i think if they get it closer to nine that'd be great uh, based upon the number of btc mines so far this quarter the company anticipates that it will mine more btc in q2 than it mined in during q1 of this year which is good so we want to see continued growth revenue for the digital currency mining company was 7.3 million reported for the three months period ended march 31st 2022 Compared to 4.8 million from last year, for the three months period ended March 31st, the company mined a total of uh, 186.53 BTC compared to 105 in the prior year. Operating income for the three months period ended March 31st was 513,000, an increase of 125,000 over the same time last year, and then realized net income of 59,000 for the three month period ended March 31st compared to a realized net income of 73,000 over the same period for the prior year. So a little bit of a decrease in net income year over year. And total assets was 97.4 million, an increase of 22% compared to last year. Cash and cash, cash, and cash equivalents of 47.72 million as of March, an increase of 39%, which is also good. Property plant and equipment consisting primarily of companies BTC miners and mining infrastructure was 41.47 million which is good as well. No problems there. Let's see what we have here. If there's anything that I wanted to point out. I think that was possibly it. Scrolling down here. Yep, that was it. There was not much here to look at. There was anything that was really uh, upsetting. We did get a little bit of a decrease, which is kind of nice to see. Share based compensation went down to 764,000 compared to 1.1 million in the year prior, which was good. And gross profit obviously came down here and I think it's part of their minor lease agreement which is what kind of hurt them here this time around okay I think that's it let's take a look at the data that I have for them and then we'll compare it and try to figure out where I went wrong on DigiHost so DigiHost I had them at approximately 8.2 basically eight and a quarter million they came in at 7.3 I was off by 13.17% the thing that I don't understand is maybe they're doing something different with their, uh, basically how they register their income from mining, whether they do it daily or if they do it weekly or if they do it monthly. I'm doing this by month. In January, we saw 62.58, which is what they reported that was unaudited. February was 50.85 and March was 75.24, which at those monthly ending 
Bitcoin prices that gave us basically 8.3 million in revenue for that. So I'm trying to figure out here, they reported, what did they report here, having mind? If I can look that up really quick here, so we can find it. 186.53, uh, 186.53, I have basically 188. So a little bit higher. So it looks like they have that audit and they came up with a little bit lower number. So they mined 186 and I have 188, but that still would represent only being off by 60,000. So I still cannot figure out where I'm off, basically almost a million dollars in revenue from them, uh, what, from what they reported. So we'll have to figure this out. Maybe somebody asked them a question on this in their conference call, if they had a conference call, or maybe we can tweet them and see how they are, how they are actually accounting for their income, whether it's daily, weekly or monthly, that would obviously be a difference from what I'm doing with the monthly. And hopefully we can get that number a little bit more accurate going forward, but we'll have to figure that out. If you guys know anything on that, please do let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear it. And also market cap. So they have a market cap of 40 million, basically. They have more in, in assets. See if where was the assets part? Total assets of 97.4 million right now. So concern here being that their market cap is only 39 million. Uh, somebody could go in for a hostile takeover on them, possibly offer, you know, 60 million or something like that for them and have assets of basically almost 100 million. It just doesn't make any sense uh, to me. So they are way undervalued in my opinion as well. The other thing that I'm questioning right now is they did report that they, in the update for April, they reported that being at one exahash on testing their one one site, they got up to one exahash uh, of reliable energy. I haven't met one exahash here, but they did report on their, down here where they report it. Oh, I saw it here someplace. Where did I see it? About did you host? Here we go. Company is currently hashing at a rate of approximately 450 petahash. So I don't know if that is going to be installed in April because they reported that being, well, I have to figure it out. This might be off a little bit. Hopefully I'll get a little bit of clarification from them on this as well. I might be off. These here are the ones that might be off here. But even that, they're saying 450. I had these at 550. So I don't want... I don't know if that information is incorrect or my information is incorrect. I got to find out on that. But they did report, obviously, in February, they were at 500 petahash in March. I think if they stay the same at 450 petahash with these miners here, we'd be okay. And then, obviously, we added these miners here, which added another 500 petahash to it. As they reported, they were running for a couple of days uh, to test the things out. So hopefully that stayed the same. But we'll see if that's the case. And that's also how I was able to get him to the 3.4 million here in March, which was the number I came up here, unless this was much lower. But even then, if even if I take these out, we're only at like 3 million or something like that, I think. Let's see here. If I take these out mining for a little bit, yeah, we're only at 3 million, so I'm still way under that. So I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. See so yeah, how they're accounting for their production numbers and go from there. So this might be off going forward as well until I unless I figure this out. So just for clarification, I want to let you guys know. And then we'll see who else reports. I don't know if anybody else is going to be reporting. Who else do we have here? We got Argo. Argo obviously did theirs. So we got their report. Bit Digital. We're waiting on Bit Digital to report still. Bit Farms already reported. We know that we were pretty close on them as well. Clean Spark already reported. We were pretty close on them as well. Core Scientific. We were pretty close on their stuff mining also. Digihost way off obviously dmg we're still waiting on dmg hive we're still waiting on hive hot eight provided theirs i was pretty close to them as well iris energy provided theirs i was off a little bit here i was a little bit higher than two and a half percent Luxfolio has not provided anything yet marathon we're close 2.3 percent on them and what do we got else mawson mawson provided we're close to them as well riot we were pretty close and sphere 3d reported 700,000. I was off on it. Originally, I had them at 6.126 million, and that was based on 
the numbers from Gryphon as well being included, which they shouldn't have been because the, obviously the merger fell apart there. So we still have a couple that need to report and then we'll be done for obviously Q1 and then we'll work on Q2, see what happens there. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, uh, hit the like button, subscribe. It helps me out tremendously. That's all I ask of you guys. I keep saying this every time. Uh, I feel like a broken record sometimes. But I do appreciate you guys watching very much. As always, Precious is available to Patreon members. Also, thank you very much to the Patreon members for their support. And we'll obviously see what happens later on this week. We've got some data coming out tomorrow from the Fed, I think, on shopping numbers, consumer pri uh, consumer shopping sentiment, I think. Um, and then we got some other stuff coming out as well. So we'll take a look and see what happens there. And we'll see what happens with Bitcoin and anything else that's interesting. Um, and then we'll also get into possibly the rewards for uh, Q1 for the miners. We'll tackle maybe four or five different categories. And we'll go give out some more rewards for that. So that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. It's not a great market to be in right now, but it might be the best time to get in if you can, I think. Uh, buy low, sell high, right? That's the American dream. It's with everything, with every business. Buy products low, sell it higher, make a profit. And that's how we can sleep easier at night, I guess. All right, that's it. I'm rambling. Have a great night. See you guys.